Hi, welcome back to Whiteboard Wednesdays. Today we're going to continue our discussion on the Global Traffic Manager load balancing algorithms. And today we're going to transition from the static algorithms to the dynamic algorithms. And we're not going to cover all of the dynamic algorithms today because there's a lot of them. Uh, what we're going to focus on today are the ones that, that uh, kind of take into account the statistics between uh, a data center and the, the LDNS servers that uh, our, our application clients use. And so if I have an LDNS server, when it makes the first request and I've got probes set up in my, in my uh, GTM configurations to pull or to pull stats from LDNSs, then it's going to start building a, 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 topo or a database of, of stats. And so let's say, for example, my, my hops are five hops away to DC1 from this LDNS and eight hops away and say 18 hops away. Okay, so if I have the hops algorithm selected as my preferred algorithm in my pool, well, probably after the first request because I don't have a database for this yet. So the first request, it's probably gonna fall back to the alternate method or, or the fallback method because I don't have any stats for this. But the next time in, I have stats for this uh, LDNS1 and I've got that established as five, eight, and 18 hops away from these data centers, then if my preferred setting is hops, I'm gonna select data center one because it's the fewest hops away. Pretty, pretty basic. And so, well, let's just leave the, let me leave that up there. So, the next algorithm that is concerned with the LDNS stats is the, so we've got, uh, we've got the hops and then we've got round trip time. So say, even though this is only five hops away, let's say that's 80 milliseconds. And even though that's eight hops away, let's say that's 50 milliseconds. And with this 18 hops away, let's say that's 300 milliseconds. Okay. So for my LDNS, then with a round trip time setting, it's going to choose the 50 milliseconds because it's the, it's the closest by round trip time to this data center. And then the third one that we'll talk about today is completion rate. And what that one's looking at is how often am I dropping connections or, or not completing connections with that LDNS server. So if my completion rate is say it's 95% here and it's 99% here, but maybe I'm, maybe I'm at 94% to, to this one, then my, my best completion rate is this, this middle data center, data center two, and it's gonna check that. So, you know, there's, there's some benefit in using these statistics for LDNS, and later on we'll talk about the quality of service algorithm, which takes into account this and a few other uh, conditions to where maybe it makes sense to, to have a, an amalgamation of all of these uh, data points to make a decision, but the concern that I have with with going with strictly a, a round trip time or a hop from your LDNS server is it doesn't really give you the perspective of your true client. So it's going to select in this case if I'm if I'm hops and I'm only five hops away from this LDNS, I'm going to choose this GTM, which is all well and good. I'm sorry, I'm going to choose this data center which has a VIP in here somewhere. And, and that's going to be this VIP down here on this LTM. Let's say I have a VIP down here on this LTM. And that's the one that gets selected. Which is all well and good from the LDNS if the LDNS was going to be the one connecting to that application. But let's say I have a client out here. And this client is 18 hops away. And... 200 milliseconds, but let's say from data center three, um, three hops and 20 milliseconds. Well, that's, that's not getting the client closest to the data center that makes the most sense for them. So in, in certain cases, the 
the path makes sense. Like if, uh, if you know that all of your clients with the LDNS uh, infrastructure is set up to where the clients are right next to where their LDNSs are, then you know that makes sense. But if, if that's an unknown, relying solely on these load balancing algorithms would not be a recommended path. And so next time we'll get into some more of the dynamic algorithms. Hopefully this has been helpful. And if you have any questions, uh, shoot them in the, uh, in the comments and we'd, we'd be happy to address them. We'll take, take care and we'll see you in the community.